Hey everybody! Hey guys! Yeah! Welcome Why, hello! To fake truck and real talking. I'm Thomas. I honk my horn. I'm Dustin. Team's back, everybody. I'm Cuddles <laughs> the Mighty. And I'm David. So, that's aka, the only, am I the only one on the show that I've like not been like hiding my identity? No, uh, I, dude, I've. Uh, uh, hey everybody, I'm Thomas Krieger. Like, okay, I've said this before. No, because yeah. those two in the middle are all ashamed. Yeah, ashamed uh, of real talking. They're, they're afraid of the. <laughs> they're afraid of the internet. We're not afraid of the internet. We're afraid of what the internet will do to us. That's right, you're afraid of the internet. The the, internet Dustin, I don't say I'm you. not afraid of sharks. I'm afraid of what sharks will do to me. If you're afraid of what sharks will do to you, you're afraid of sharks. You're afraid of the internet. You're afraid of horses. <laughs> I'm not afraid of horses. I respect horses. No, you said you fear them. No, that thing could hey, kill me. I don't want to get that, near it. Right, that's not me saying I can fear it. That's me saying, okay, that thing can kill me. That sounds like a fear to me. No, it's not a fear. You Would just, that sound like a fear to y'all? Man, Thomas, you know how the internet could totally fuck us over? Yeah. By sending us a bunch of pizzas. That would be the worst. <laughs> Wouldn't oh, it? dude, the internet. Oh, fuck you. Oh, man. actually supporting us somehow. Nah, man, internet, if you just sent a bunch of pizza, you'd just be the biggest jerks. Man, I'm glad you guys are here. Because the Me and Dustin episode we just did. I tried to get over there, but somebody didn't want me to get over there. When you guys get, like, way deep into it, sometimes you get a little bit off topic. (laughs) What does that mean? It can't be off topic. Whatever we're talking about is on topic. All right, fine. You get two on topic. (laughs) Well, we got two on topic. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We talked about, well, Dustin didn't stop me from talking about classical music for, like, half an hour. Oh, do oh, tell. And I'll make sure to skip that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, viewers, well, um, if me and David aren't able to make it, just listen to the Thursday episode and skip the Monday episode. That's that's pretty much how it's going to work. Uh, well, Dustin the, jumped out on me. Thursday will be the good episode. And Thomas, because I think it was like, uh, I just want to just be with Dustin this time. <laughs> right. just and then you talk about classical music for half an hour. It's I, some I bullshit. I lumped you into that statement, but really it's about me. If I'm not here... This podcast just falls apart, man. Scotty, well, you, you don't band. know, man. You you throw me under the bus. There's never been a Scotty Sound band. band. <laughs> Wait, is this gonna be like the Tenacious D song, where then like, if this was a band, what is? Listen, Pete song? Best, get the fuck out of here. I hope that was the right is, Beatle. Is Scotty the bassist <laughs> or the drummer? No, 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 no. I like the drummer. Dr- so the I'm drummer. Take that. All right. Scotty can be bassist, so like he can just pretend to play. Nah, I want to be the lead singer. Dibs on electric triangle. <laughs> One day I'll make that instrument. I feel passionately, but I'm not in touch with reality. Yeah, I want to be the lead singer. So uh, I did want to uh, actually talk about a couple of things that you'd uh, mentioned on a previous episode. One, okay. the, why doesn't everybody just talk like they are when they're drunk? Oh, me. Yeah, that part. Yeah, fuck those people. I'm sorry. That makes me sad. <laughs> Wait, what? I am, I am not entertaining when I'm totally hammered. I'm not talking like, about you. No, he, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking yeah. about like people just saying what they think. Yeah, like people. Right, that's what people do when they're hammered. Yeah. No, he. W- I say what I think, not hammered. I just want people to be there's, themselves. There's a different type of honesty that is drunk honesty, Thomas. And not for me, I don't think. Well, Scotty. For, for me, yes. No, there, it, for Thomas, too. There, there totally there's is. also, there's... Wait, what the fuck do you... Uh, totally is. No, there isn't. There's <laughs> things you talk about more when you're drunk versus not drunk. Also, okay, yeah, you'll say the thing, but you'll say it in totally the wrong way that won't make the point that you wanted to make. That's the reason people don't say that shit drunk. No. I just don't I like what people... y'all are talking about. I just don't like when people mask their personality to the point that they have to have an excuse such as alcohol to loosen up or be themselves. I don't think, like, drinking is taking off the mask. No, drinking think is not taking off the mask. Drinking is taking off the filter, and that is not Drinking great Drinking is not yeah. taking off the mask or the filter. Drinking is, is the excuse. It is the morning after, oh, well, I was drunk. Have you ever gotten drunk, Dustin? This no. legitimate... Well, then shut the fuck up. You don't know anything about it. No, I don't know. No, 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 no. Fuck you. I don't know a first-hand no. experience from. No, it. you've That's never, you've never gotten drunk. No, fuck and you. Shut up. up you don't get yeah, to talk you about it. No. Hammered and fucked up before you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You, you don't get to have an opinion That's the on only this. Only thing I'm missing. 
No, when I have to deal with people... That's like the, the most next... important thing. No, when I have to deal with people the next morning who are, well, I was drunk, so it was okay. But you I can't guess. understand when they say, well, I was drunk, to be like, oh, okay, they were drunk. So you're saying it's okay to be a complete douchebag? Well, well, no, I'm not saying it's wrong. okay to be a douchebag. In, in, the, in the conversation... Then, uh, then how am I... Then I'm, I'm free to have an opinion in, on that, in correct? In the conversation we had, he talked about he's seen me drunk, and he didn't see a big difference. No, I just saw he's, Thomas he's, being more giggly and more, like, open towards saying emotional yeah, things. He's, but he, over the time, Thomas has become very more... Maybe more accommodating to explaining emotions as well. Right. right. I've been a douchebag and tried to start fights with people and done a whole bunch, bunch of dumb shit that I would not have tried to do sober. Because yeah. you're suppressing that part of you, Scotty. No, you're suppressing that, Dustin. Yeah. Might be suppressed. Now, Dustin, I think you do need to know that you do think things drunk that you would not think normally. I'm pretty sure. Like, I am more inclined to fight people drunk than I am. Especially if there's lesbians Rome. involved, I will be beating the shit out of some people. <laughs> wait, wait, somebody's like smash-talking lesbians, or...? I, I think I just, think he's talking about like if there's lesbians in the area and he can like be like ah oh, man smash. That's right. That's, that's pretty much how. <laughs> Scotty man smash lesbians want him now. That's that's not a part of sober. I don't know. I like Scotty. That's like yeah. That, this is a really good idea. No, that moronic <laughs> shit only comes out when I'm hammered. I like the idea of just Scotty getting really drunk oh. and trying to fight lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to trim my arms, you guys. <laughs> God. <laughs> No, no, I just like the idea of a drunk Scotty thinking that punching a lesbian will draw him attraction. Don't fight the lesbian. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. He gets confused and does it by accident. It's, it's He's the, not obviously no, intentionally. It's the classic male thing where you're just sitting at a table being all normal, but then when the lesbians walk in the room, you crack the table in half and go, ah! <laughs> and you hope that impresses them. Yes. And they don't. Then he's looking at them, they're like, ew, go away. Scotty mad. <laughs> and he just rushes the lesbians. And... All right, hypothetically, even if I did have those thoughts sober, I don't think either way those would come off as a good thing to let through on a filter. So, no. Just getting drunk is not... People... But I don't think what he was talking about was that... Not y'all in particular. He, he was not saying that people need to be exactly the same, drunk and sober. He's talking about people that uh, are fake normally, and then when they are drunk... The real person inside yeah, comes Yeah, I out. don't perceive y'all as fake on the normal. You mean drunk racists? <laughs> drunk racists, drunk everything, really. I don't know. Like, I think, I think he's like, absolutely right about that Like, when you have to find, like, the, the, the real opinion somebody has through them being in an intoxicated state, and there's a difference between just kind of drunk rambling... Like, he rolled up and Scotty's like, man, that chick is so fucking hot. Whatever. He's just drunk and he wants he, to put He's talking about being something. surprised by something somebody drunk does. Like, if Scotty tries to impress lesbians, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But if Scotty started, like, every time he gets drunk, kind of gets a little touchy-feely around me. And not in a ha-ha, this is funny, <laughs> but, like, really touchy-feely around me to the point that I have to question his sexuality. I don't know, man. Right, but what about mopey emotional, Scotty? You never seen that before, have you? No, I haven't. But <laughs> I believe. Be but, but see that might. that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me either. Yeah, I, like I fully believe that you have emotions, but you do right. a really. But, but you like, don't want to discuss. But like, do you here, think that's obviously. like? But I don't like. That's not something that would be fun for me to talk about sober. And I, I, I can fully understand that. Scary. But he's not. He's not talking about that. I think he's talking about like people who, where you you get a fault like the people that are not true to themselves. It's not that you're. Uh, excluding things is like you're creating a false impression of yourself. You're yeah, that's leading right. somebody. About that's that what society is. Yes, that perceived image that you have crafted throughout the years for the rest of the world to see to hide what is really you. What he's talking about is not like, oh, I didn't know this was a part of you. It, it's more like if I got drunk and I was like, hey man, fuck Dustin, he sucks. When you've only ever seen me be cool with him. You know? Except for those times where you got drunk and said, hey, Dustin fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Thomas. it's the different, like, one is, abs is, is just not saying something, and the other thing is creating a lie. False people are creating a lie, and getting drunk takes that away. I don't know, I think you're being a little bit unfair, because sometimes you could have mixed opinions on people. Well, and, and whatever what I'm feeling immediately... We'll yeah, and what? Yeah. Be pitched with all the fervor as if that's the only. <laughs> yeah, thing ever. especially. Right, yeah. Whatever. I'm done with this fucking conversation. All right. Point two. We're yeah. talking about um, you got like stupid eye. Yep. And I'm not saying that it couldn't have been marijuana laced with something, but it's entirely possible it was just marijuana. Oh no no, that's what I no no that's why when I said 
Uh, that's what people have told me. That's why I say that's what people have told me. I have no idea. I personally suspect it was just fucking marijuana. Like, like probably really good marijuana, but if you're A, low tolerance because you've never smoked it before, B, marijuana is a hallucinogen. And a lot of people like to discount that really yeah. quickly, but it will have, like, those are the same effects that most hallucinogens have. Yeah. Gravity bongs are bad, you guys. Well, that's because we left you passed out of the Well, what about the part where I, like, lose control of my body, and I'm just sitting there jerking, uncontrollably jerking? Well, that's fucked up. Yeah, Dang no, it. that's, you'll, ex- like, you'll have trouble controlling your body, you'll experience, you experience the weird time loop shit, that's, um, <laughs> that, no, that's, that's normal hallucinogen yeah. shit. Yeah. That, that's why I, that's why every time I've ever said that it is just this is what people have told me because I don't know and especially you get people that like smoke weed all the time yeah they've got like a stupid high tolerance it doesn't affect them the same way whereas you like the, the part of the reason you don't smoke it all the time is because it affects you like that well yeah so, no I, I don't really want to ever smoke pot again because fuck that I've never tried pot I don't really think I like mind-altering substances anyway. Dustin, one day you should just go on, like, a fucking binge. Like, when you're, like, 70. Just stay, like, clean until then, and then just all the drugs. Yeah, I mean, that's my plan. Like, when I get to fucking... When I get to... Whenever I'm done, all the drugs. <laughs> really, just just all, really just all the crack. <laughs> I feel well, like 70 is a good time to start up the heroin addiction. Uh, from what I understand, crack. Really? From what I've been pitched, crack is really... But, like, I feel like if coke, I might not become as habitually addicted to there's always the oh like, look at look at you going to the shallow pool no the whole point is if you're going to go balls deep if you're going to be like this is no, what no. i'm going to do I until spend, i die i want to spend like five years enjoying it not like i'm dead in a week from think, just heroin I don't think crack is what i want to do though i want to do heroin yeah i think if you're going to be old and just say fuck it heroin yeah. Not that I've ever done heroin, but everything I've seen about heroin, that seems like the good way just to now, say fuck the world. Now, heroin's a downer, and, like, you just, all you do is sleep, whereas we're talking about, like, the one that people get excited about and that people want to enjoy is crack. Yeah, but I don't want to be, like, the hyped-up old dude. Yeah, crack I is... Want to be co- I want to be the grandpa on coke. I want to be, like, balls these, out of my these, mind these, just running through and chasing people. These substances just make you crazy and rot your mind. Like, heroin is just good shit. It just kills you. Like, heroin doesn't do anything to you. You know? You I don't, feel I don't good, know enough about it. And then if you take too much of it, you die. Can I just be Grandpa running around in his underwear and screaming Actually, at his kids? Actually, you know what you could do? E. Yeah. A drug that just, like... Because if you're going to destroy your brain, like, this one will destroy your brain and you'll feel good doing it. Yeah. Man, so I was in the bathroom the other day. And this old dude comes in. And I'm washing my hands, and I'm watching the mirror. Dude walks over the urinal, hikes up the leg of his shorts, and just takes a piss that way. <laughs> Is that awesome or not? I can't tell. If, if I am wearing a pair of shorts and there's nobody else around, I will do that. But if there's somebody else there, then yes, you go with the traditional. Method. I never even thought anyone do that would do that older than the age of 12. Like... Pull your dang Wait, shorts down. Wait, do you have an age limit on that? Or yeah, because I, yeah, I could see a kid doing that, but don't... Is this a normal thing? Uh, this is the first thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've never even known a kid to do I, that. I do it all the time. This is like one of those things where it's like... No, 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 Scotty. Now, hang on, now I have two questions. One, how short are your shorts? Or two, how long <laughs> is your dick? <laughs> but, like, all you do is just, like... Thomas... Dude, they're big, baggy shorts. All you do is reach up... Yeah. ...and pull. I'm like... This is like the uh, the unknown debate of wiping sitting down or standing up, where people who've done it one way or the other never even considered the other option. Yeah, yeah. Like I stand up when I wipe. I don't know well, how that how Wait, you, you do. do? That. I don't know. Yeah. How people See, this is what I'm talking about. Happens. Exactly. <laughs> you stand and wipe. Yes, yeah, so I stand. You don't side first. swipe. Like and it, no, no. The Wait, side swipe. Yeah, he's talking no, about really? like lift side and then. Yeah. Oh, it's, see, see. Now no, these no, are no. all new options that no, no, I'm not no, aware no. of. What do you do? Through the legs. Oh, dude, no! That's you get your balls involved. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. This is fucking stupid because years ago I watched this goddamn stupid movie. And it was four college dudes, and they had this exact same goddamn debate. And like in synchronized order, we just went through what everyone said. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, when you wipe, yeah, I stand up and wipe. That's what I do." And I was like, "What? You don't go side bowl? Like I do? I do side bowl." Here goes David. Like, yeah, I just go between my balls. And I'm like, "No, it's deja vu for that fucking poor terrible movie." 
I mean, I can see through the balls, but the problem with the side swipe is that my my forearm might hit the toilet seat. Yeah, there's that, and also like, hey man, there could be still still be some piss in the shaft. I don't want to like bump it and be like, oh god, there's piss in my hand now. Yeah, so the stand up method. No, the lean, it. the lean method. The side swipe. You just lean over like this. You kind of go. Boop, 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 yeah, boop. me and Dustin know how to wipe our butts. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's no right way. No, there's no, just there's the way right you've way. always you done it. Freaks. <laughs> there's just the way you've always done it, and then everybody else is insane. You goddamn perverts. No, 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 no. I can only assume you learned to wipe through what your parents taught you. So this just gives me a whole new perspective on what your dad, how your dad wipes. And I'd really love to think that his no, old wait, age... I didn't learn how to wipe from watching my parents wipe, dude. No, 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 not watching your parents, but your parents potty trained you, right? I guess, but I don't know yeah. that I got... So, how do they wipe you? Well, dude, no. no. Like, I think but that... If I, on my own, as a child, was standing up wiping my butt, like, even if they were like, that's really weird, but my butt's clean, you really think they're going to correct no, me? No, no, no one's going like, to give a job, fuck dude. as long as you did the job, especially as a kid. So why is the assumption that they taught me how to do it and not I just naturally figured because out how to I, wipe my butt? Because I probably figured that when you first pooped, the very first time you did, you probably didn't know what to do. Like, when you were on your toilet bowl, you're like, hey, mom, I pooped. Now what? And they're like, all right, now we're going to teach you to wipe. And they probably, I would think people would just kind of use their own instinct on wiping. All right, fine. If that's the argument we're going to go with, I'm going to say my parents care the most because I use the stand method. If they wanted to check to make sure your butt was clean, they'd have you do the standing method. Yeah, probably. To check to make sure. That or it's just easy. Or that or it so just be fucking your, easier. Your parents taught you the sit and side swipe method to like just get that shit done. No, or that. No, you no, could no have or a crusty butthole and like gotten some sort of <laughs> butt know, disease, butt infection. We have just as much access to our buttholes as you do standing. No, 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 like, or, or it's just easier to wipe your kid when they're standing. Like, you poop, and then you're like, do you really I just really kind of want a blind swipe? Or do you want to send your kid up and be like, oh, turn around, spread your cheeks? How do, intimate do, do, do. do you think people are getting with their kids' buttholes? Enough to make sure it's clean. I don't know. I haven't had a kid, thankfully, and I've never From had From what I've gathered, when you're, you know, changing diapers, you get little wet wipes, you're swiping away, you're doing, like, little... Yeah, but at the point where you can have a conversation with it, I'll, I'll be like, here's some toilet paper... That goes on your butthole. You take care of it. I just... I, I don't know. This is just what I'm thinking. I'm just kind of going spitballing it here because I don't know how I'm going to teach my kid to wipe. I'll be happy no matter what. Hope he's not a stander. Does this lead to later episodes of <laughs> FTRT where we invite everybody's parents over and ask them about butthole wiping? That'd be great. <laughs> that would be horrible. That'd be pretty funny. You open the door on your son. Be like, You're standing?! I didn't raise a standard. <laughs> and you start beating him with a shoe. No, I just love the. I like the idea of David's dad looking at him between the balls. Really, David? <laughs> between the balls. You gotta do it like Dick does it. <laughs> I love your dad. Seriously, between the legs is a lady thing to do. I'm a white by vagina. No, no, they don't even do that. They're like taught like front to back. Like, I, I don't know, do they do like a start here and go whoop and drop No, or? I'm saying that's like a, hey, I'm getting, the, uh, I'm wiping my vagina. You don't go under the legs if you're wiping your asshole if you're a chick. True. Because you don't want to like scoop it into. Well, yeah, you don't want to get any peanut butter in the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's just bad news for everybody. <laughs> God. Uh. This reminds me of that Louis C.K. skit where he's just talking about having to like wipe his little daughter's like, vagina. Yeah, they just like you say vagina. So gross. Why did he just get weirded out or something? Or well, it's just like I didn't realize that th 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 this was going to be my future. Just cleaning up a poopy vagina. <laughs> That's a gross. Well, that was a lovely conversation. Man, we steamrolled through that one. All right. Well, now, certainly Scotty, let's pretend like the two of us aren't here and have a deep conversation. <laughs> now, Scotty, do you have any other complaints you'd like to bring up from past episodes? Uh, any, yes, anything I else? wasn't in them. The end. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been making cutbacks. As I explained to David, uh, you know, turn in your name tag and your card key. I never... I, all I got were these stickers. Yeah, That's we got fucking awesome fake truck and real talking stickers. Yeah. You should have like a sticker contest where the winner gets so a winner, sticker you open thing. The online FTRT store. It's already up. Really? If you go to ftrtpodcast.com, you click on support the show, 
there's a link there that says, hey, you can buy a t-shirt. If you click on that, it goes to our Spreadshirt store where you can buy a t-shirt, pins, or these friggin' awesome stickers. Apparently we're supposed to tag these Why around Why you wait for me to pimp that as opposed to not pimping it at the beginning of the episode? Because... <laughs> Uh, because the my order of operations is get people to listen to us first, then tell them to buy shit. But I think the awesome swag that everybody will buy <laughs> will increase the viewers by <laughs> one and a half full. Well, I just told you. There's that stuff there. So we'll have from 14 to 21 viewers? Has viewership been going up or down? Up. Sweet. What are we up to? I don't really think it matters. This is not... <laughs> We're actually ashamed. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Sir. This is not podcast content, you it's guys. All right. It's alright. We're doing leagues better than Double D in the morning <laughs> afternoon show, but taped at night. Doing leagues better than those two jackals. Notice the constant... Well, never mind. <laughs> See, we talked about poop last podcast, but... Maybe we just have a fecal this obsession. This about Mozart. This is about Mozart and his poop jokes. Mozart probably would have found this last conversation very funny. Probably would have loved the fuck out of it. Was When was peanut... No, peanut butter wasn't invented then, though. I got no idea about peanut butter. No, peanut butter wasn't invented then. Was he it? He wouldn't have been able to enjoy it. How do you know that? When was peanut butter invented? Wasn't it like uh, George Washington Carver wasn't uh, credited for it? No, he didn't. He, really? did, he didn't. He went on it. Uh, yeah. I thought he was in credit. He was uh, given the credit. For no, it. he had like a bunch of inventions with like peanuts, but he didn't actually invent peanut butter. Who uh, invented the peanut butter? I don't know. All I know, all, the only trivia I know <laughs> is that it wasn't him. <laughs> Watch it totally be him. Well, what else did he do with peanuts then? Uh, all sorts of shit. Carver, you're what? useless now. <laughs> Another black man defaced by a white man. Way to go, David. I hope I'm like totally wrong about that and just made an ass of myself. Are on... you not thinking of the American Dad episode? Hmm. There's totally an American Dad episode about that. I was pretty sure George, uh, yeah, George Washington Carver got it. Like I'm, I, I was. That is that, that is school. an oft repeated fact, and yes, it is also said in school. But I also was taught in school that oh. in Columbus's time they thought the world was flat, and nobody believed him when he wanted to f- sail around the world. And uh, that's completely false. Uh, yeah, what's public- up with like just lying to third graders because it's easy? Yeah, the public education system lied to me. Because like if they just never told me that, I would have had a better understanding of history if I just didn't hear what third grade had to tell me. Yeah, I mean, I understand leave not that whole like raping of the native people issue. But like, <laughs> you don't have to lie about that. Uh, why did they even bother lying about half that shit? Well, see, it's not because like they just made it, it up. Because it makes us look Because here's the thing. Teachers are fucking lazy. Because uh, what happened is a guy in the 19th century wrote a, like, humorous novel about Columbus. And in it were a lot of jokes. One of the jokes was that uh, everybody thought the world was flat and nobody believed Columbus. Hmm. So people just took this as fact. And then taught it to me 200 years later. Yeah. See, this is why all teachers should just be math teachers. There's no real fucking that up once you know it. Like, <laughs> uh, I had. All the numbers do the same thing. No, had, what if. I had a high school math teacher that uh, told the entire class that a negative number, like negative six, was greater than no- negative four. Not that negative four was greater than negative six. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. That's incorrect. Well, that's... Like, not even, like, absolute value or something but, like but that? Just no, between no, being just like, ignorant and being stupid. Uh, no, the, the effective result is you taught children something wrong. I had a chemistry teacher that did math wrong. Like, you can fuck math up. But yeah. numbers. Really, I would say... You uh, can fuck math up, but you at least have math to prove it when you do it differently and it comes out the same. Well, but history, I think, is easier like to consistently. teach. See, His- history, you just have to know the right facts. Yeah, but you, you can just have a passion for history. Them. Well, like, wouldn't it be fun just to, like... I don't think these when teachers teaching, had the same passion anymore. When you're teaching kids, like, the multiplication tables, just make one of them wrong. Because <laughs> that'll stick with them for life. 9, 18, 27, 32. <laughs> Exactly. Well, this just, yeah, nine does that weird thing with five. This just gets into the thing the of, like, four. raising children like the dad from Calvin and Hobbes. 
Elaborate. That poor kid. Did you ever read Calvin and Hobbes? Yes, loved it. Uh, well, then you should know that his dad, all the time, when Calvin would ask him something, his dad would just make up bullshit. Well, his dad didn't always make up bullshit. Like, there were sarcastic times. But no, there were times he, he, no it's, if he didn't know it, he just Sunday made shit up. About him explaining to Calvin that the world was in black and white when black and white pictures were taken. And the reason painting, paintings aren't in black and white is because they used colors to paint a black and white picture, and after the world turned to color, the paintings turned to color too. But, but since the pictures were pictures of black and white world, they stayed black and white. I did not see that comic in particular. I just remember the one where, I he have, was, where Calvin kept hitting them with the fucking whys. Like, why is the sky blue? Because of this, this, this. Why are clouds white? This, this, this. Why does this happen? Hmm, I don't know. Guess we ought to look it up in a history book. And Calvin just like a smart ass, like, guess there ain't really much of a test to become a dad, is there? So I was like, fuck you, Calvin. <laughs> yeah, no, I have hardcover uh, books of every single Calvin Hobbes strip. Gotcha. I'm guessing. Oh, you do you have like the anthology thing? Yes. The master's collection. Nice. <laughs> like, don't fuck with me when it comes to Calvin Hobbes. Then I'm I guessing he did that more than the actual like moments where he tried and Calvin was just being a consistent asshole and condescending prick. I don't think he tried once. Legitimately in the books, I don't. No, he I don't tried. think he tried once. I'd see him no, try. I, I, I remember. I remember the strip he's talking about. Okay, did he actually try, or was it bullshit? Yeah, he, about was, he was going off what he knew, and then he admitted to like, I don't know. It's been a while. Maybe we should look this stuff up. He admitted when he hit a wall and didn't know yeah. anymore. And then Calvin is just like, "You suck as a dad," and just kind of walks away. So you know what? That's probably what started the whole. I'm going to lie to this little <laughs> bastard for the rest of my life. I'm not going to be one up by an eight year old. God, do you remember the... Uh, you know yesterday? what? If I had an eight-year-old with that kind of vocabulary, fucking... Having that as your kid, like, would probably, like... He's obviously, like, a smart kid and all, but, like, man, that would suck to have that kid as, as your kid. No, that'd be awesome. Well, it'd be, no, no, no. It'd be a lot that of work. awesome. It sucked for his parents. That's what I mean. Dealing with, like, returning from the night from the movies just to see the babysitter completely pissed off and the cops there. You're going to be a little upset. You'll laugh about it, like, two weeks down the road... You're like, yeah, no, that I was think- pretty funny. But on the spot, when you have to fi- you have to finish up the police report, pay the babysitter extra money just to hope she comes back next time. No, I, I always find shit funny even when I don't like it. <laughs> like, if some kid locks some fucking babysitter out of the house, <laughs> that's funny. Even, <laughs> even if I don't like it, even if I have to do a bunch of stuff to make up for it, I'm laughing about it. Yeah. Then, like, the daily fight to get him to school... The shit he put you have to do with the teachers. Thing I guess it's with all kids. I don't know that kid's ADD as hell. Like, if that was a real kid, ADD as hell. Did think it was you, David? You showed me like the last comic of Calvin and Hobbes. Nah, it wasn't the real one. It was like a fake one. Yeah, like, but I thought, yeah, I thought it was one that he was thinking about doing. If he ever actually got to a point where he needed to end the series. Nah, I think it was like early. one of those fan hoaxes. Uh, what the bacon and Hobbs thing? No, uh, the whole like he takes his riddle in and then like Hobbs turns into like a normal yeah, stuff animal. That's a fan. Mm-hmm. No, he didn't take a uh, riddle in. It was just uh, the one I saw was Calvin and Hobbs. They go up and they see a playground, and Calvin's like, "Hey, Hobbs, let's go play with the kids." He turns around, and there's just Hobbs being a stuffed tiger, and there's Calvin running away from Hobbs to the kids to go play. Okay, I don't remember that one. Yeah, that's a fan thing. Okay, but I was like, man, that. Would, How did it end? That would I fit. forget. Uh, it ended on... Uh, Wasn't it like, yay, let's go play or something? Yeah, where they're like, he's dragging the sled out into the snow. Uh, and he says something about how there's like a great big world to explore out there. Yeah. And something about how I think he's glad Hobbs is with him. Yeah. And then and they just slide out. Why did Bill Watterson have to be all like, not making those anymore? Because oh, they were so good. Because he, he was done. And if he said he was done, then I don't want him to make anymore. Well, I believe it. But at the yeah. same time, man, that was such a quit while damn you were good ahead. comic. He was another one of those guys where if you read like the commentary on his own comics, he's not. sometimes he's not talking about the comic. He's talking about like a little picture of a picture that he did in one of them. And he's like, and I didn't get this artistic part yeah. right. Yeah. He, well, he, this dinosaur wasn't drawn the way it was supposed to be. It was like, man, dinosaurs are awesome. He's like, nah, this this was all fucked up. Yeah, he he he. It's it, it's the kind of the classic artist thing where you can't really see what you've done. Of he he, because that comic I think was like all works of art are so personal. You can't see how it's different, like how people are receiving it, because yeah. people like it because he put himself into that comic and he's. 
when we read those comic strips, we take it in the context that it's given and we find it insightful or amusing or whatever. But to him, all he sees is him talking. Because, uh, like, he's, he's said um, that when he reads it, he is shocked at how much of just him talking those strips are. If he just puts his thoughts into that strip. Uh, and like he's saying, he artists get very concerned with minute details and get really wrapped up in things that are other than the big picture. Yeah. Has there ever been a comic as good as that one or even close? No, absolutely not. Because, like... What about Peanuts? <laughs> no, fuck Peanuts. <laughs> Dilbert, man. Dilbert. I mean, like, anything. Man, I really... That Dilbert guy is a dickhole. Uh, but, like, his books, like, his actual books are He's awesome. a dickhole. Why? Uh, because he... The Dilbert guy got busted for... He was on, like, his forums or something, arguing with somebody, saying that Dilbert was... Like, he was saying Dilbert was awesome, and the guy he was arguing with was saying Dilbert sucks. Uh, and he had been doing it, like, under a different name. Like, he had just been, like, yeah. Joe Forum user, and then it came out this is actually the guy that does Dilbert. Wait, was this like actually came out or like yeah. somebody? No, and then he wrote a great big blog on his site justifying why he did this. And was this his own? Like, no, why would you? No, he's already famous. The, no. The blog made him look even worse. So. No, you're already famous and you're doing that. That's a, stupid. Like, he's actually pretty funny. Dilbert's occasionally funny. I, I think the only like comic I think is like really consistently awesome is XKCD over the ones I've ever read. But it's, it does. It's not like it doesn't have like the artistry. I don't count web comics in with normal comics. Like I, don't, I think that's unfair. They're they're a different they're a different thing. I think not really. There's nothing that different about the format. They're, they're, the format, no, but like what they usually talk about. Your actual like yeah, but I mean no, like maybe the content. Just, just reading about Calvin and Hobbes, like the the amount of work and personal struggle it was for him to get the Sunday strips to be as big as they were. Like he did not have the creative freedom that webcomic artists do. They do do three panel strips most of the time, but they can they can do anything they want with that. If they want to do five panels today, they can. If they want to do color today, they can. If they want to do a great big spread, they can. They want to put a giant purple dick on there. Right. But and like the, the the print comics, there is an there they con the, the the artist is working within a constrained medium. Yeah, they put you in a box and say do what you can in here. Yeah. Like I Calvin and Hobbes would absolutely not be the same if it was not a print comic. If he was just drawing whatever, like people do today. I think they're very similar, and webcomics obviously came out of print comics, but I think they're a different genre of work. Uh, I mean, I feel like... Maybe, I don't, I don't know, I think they're close enough in the ballpark for me to compare them directly, personally. Keep up on this but, yeah, the problem with web comics, but yes, there are differences. Too damn many of them. But I mean, like, where legitimately like, too, like too many damn legitimately good ones, or I would love to see like no, a legitimately no, really good shit. one, like Calvin yeah, Hobbes. Very clear, most of but well, yeah, even, I wouldn't even know where to even find if it. We include all web comics. Uh, there's nothing as good as Calvin Hobbes. Yeah, Perry Bubble Fellowship was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. PBF Comics, but it wasn't. I don't know. Yeah, no, because the the well, I think also it's about like maturation. Um, there's not really anybody on the internet that has, because a lot of it is just like cheap jokes or stereotypical storytelling. Yeah, I feel yeah okay. So like the content restraints of like don't make dick jokes. I feel. But it's not even that. Like there's just not anything as like sort of holistic and insightful and like. Like, the subtle surrealism of Calvin and Hobbes, nobody on the internet can, like... The, like, the way he just never breaks face. You know? Where there's no breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. There's just this constant uh, immersion of subtle surrealism. No, no... I've not seen an artist or, or writer on the internet for webcomics... Be able to walk that line very well. 
Like everyone goes in big, in big swings. Right. You know. You know what gives me about web comics, especially like action oriented web comics. A lot of the writing tends to reek of really bad fan fiction. Yeah. Like that level of they want you to think their characters are cool without really being able to give you a reason why they're cool. Well, because most of the time webcomics are written by artists, and... Hey, what are you trying to say there, Thomas? Artists are not very good writers. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where it's like... I think you just generally become good at what you do. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, like, I don't think there's necessarily a huge difference between someone who's an artist or a writer. Well, it's just no. an artist has put the effort into being an artist, yeah. and a writer has put... No, I, like, what I'm saying is, writers have spent all their time trying to be good at writing, so yeah. when, an, when someone who has spent all their time trying to be good at drawing, then writes for that drawing, it's not as good as if you just went to somebody who has written this entire time and say, hey, saying the plot Yeah, but then again, that's not saying... fair, necessarily, because, like, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, that was some, one dude. Some people can do both. Yeah, that's why there's been nothing like Calvin and Hobbes. I guess my like I don't know. It's weird that like nobody, no nobody's like taking up the mantle. Yeah, but really, that's a pretty. That, but then again, big like shoot. If I don't. Do. I don't think you take up the mantle by being like you know what I'm gonna do, make a better, better comic than Calvin and Hobbes. Like that's too abstract of a goal. But no, no. I, I think my my point is that like. In the mass of people who are on the internet, and that subset who'd want to make a web comic, you would hope that at least one of them was as good as that guy. But you're reaching. It's different because when we're talking about the time in which that was coming out, like there wasn't a huge internet craze. It was this is the comics that were available. This this was the most readily available, and it hit a very wide group of people. Yeah, like, and with everything about... Old people like Calvin and Hobbes. No, 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 with everything that... And the, we like Calvin and Hobbes. Well, that just means if Calvin and Hobbes didn't exist today, it just wouldn't be popular because the media is so broken up, but it should still be there. Yeah, but also think about it this way, the... Oh, man, I completely lost my train of thought. God damn it, Scotty, you were talking so well, much. Well, maybe it's like, just, like, you know, I feel like, oh, sorry, co like comics were more important. Oh, no. Back when a, no, a lot of your entertainment was just newspapers, point, just remember it, and the comics it. actually mattered, I think nowadays it's just nobody cares. No, like, I, but I go out and looking like I'll go look at other people's web comics. It's just well, the thing is, do most you think the time they suck? Do you think there's more or less cartoonists than there was? I feel like the people who would be cartoonists might be going into different things. Well, but are there more or less cartoonists today than twenty years ago? Uh, I feel like there's probably the same peop num amount of people who are trying to do just more that sort of thing, the but like there's more I, opportunities they, to show your stuff online, but less interest. I, I would say there's probably more cartoonists today because I think it's easier to get paid to be a cartoonist today than it was 20 years ago. Because like I know plenty of web comics that Boat. people have made a living for 10 years, and brum, brum. okay, you know, and nobody knows them. It's just, this is how the internet is. is. Is people that we have no idea about can make money off of it. Whereas cartoonists in the print age, I don't think... Uh, mm. Like, unless you were one of the rare syndicated comics, no. I don't think you're making a living. All right. I do find that to be pretty awesome, too. That the internet's gotten so big, like... It, when we're talking about, like, that feminism video, I didn't even know who this girl was. Yeah. And apparently she's like, hey, I'll make these videos all I want is $6,000. And everybody's... Hawks cash at her to the point where she gets over a hundred thousand dollars to this video. Sorry, set of videos. Yeah, before you're telling me she didn't do a good job. Yeah, we're talking about Anita Sarkeesian. I don't know how what the fuck her last name is. Close enough. I'm not saying she didn't have some good points. It's not like the well, no, because the here's the thing. Was invalid. Here's the thing. I don't need to get paid one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to tell you how women are treated poorly in video game storytelling. You can give me a dollar, and I'll tell you what the fuck's wrong. Like, that's the easy part. The hard part is going about it in an intelligent and insightful way that elevates discourse and illuminates the subject to certain people, which she absolutely does not do. I feel like a lot of time, like, I feel there, a lot of people are somewhat unfair to her in that they throw around that $150,000 figure yeah. like she was asking that much, which there she wasn't. There, yeah, so, absolutely. I there, mean, I wasn't throwing that at all. I like no, no, I'm not saying. I'm just saying in general, not you. 
in general, like people are like, oh, 150, this is bullshit. Like, why should you need six people grand? threw that six thousand? I feel like that's no, no. Why I mean, you even need six grand to make a video? Take like, your time to do it to buy the video games, games yeah, maybe to buy a camera. Six thousand dollars probably isn't that much, especially yeah. considering. I think she has like hours of video planned. That's the only thing. I think okay. a lot of people just completely discount the like time if, that if it, it can takes be to like, do stuff. If it can be shown, like if it, if you can see for a fact that six grand was actually spent to make it, I'm cool. Like if it was just you know, Thomas on his little shitty webcam, dude. If I if I wanted to make a series of videos, I'd probably need six grand. But it's like, it's do you know what a camera costs? No, no, I'm talking like a really shitty, low quality webcam sitting at the top of your computer while you're sitting in a chair. Yeah, but I mean, here's like the if thing. that were the product that was uh, to come out from six grand. Obviously, you didn't spend the well, money. Well, no, right. you don't have. You can't expect anything. It's Kickstarter. Like, it's just but hey. Set, but you set a goal of six grand. It, it may not even you don't. But you don't have any right to say hey. Well, what did you spend this money on? You're not an investor. You're right. You just I'm this not, person I'm not. money. But Maybe I'm, that person just was not willing to do these videos unless you paid them six thousand yeah, dollars and they put if, it even if in their she pocket. Calculated and her salary for however long it was going to take her, like that was her living money. Whatever she perceives her living money to be necessary to be is a totally legit number for her to add into that. Yep. Because like if she's doing nothing but make researching for those videos and taping those videos, then all of her income has to be from that Kickstarter campaign. Fair and enough. If it was going to be a three month period. Maybe she wanted a thousand dollars a month and three thousand dollars in materials. Yeah, it, it's, it's just it's just irrelevant what how that money is used. But I do feel like a lot of people like it's with, with digital media. They like it just doesn't register with some people that the time to do it yeah. is the biggest. Expense. The, the internet's expectations and the way internet treats those expectations are completely heinous. Like this woman, um, she after she'd gotten the money, uh, she then like. I guess went to work on it and she went dark for a couple months and I think it was almost a year I think so Uh, it was a while but the point is people freaked the fuck out saying that uh, she just ran off with the money like she just stole the money and uh, like death threats and everything and trying to get like the money back and uh, no she just went and made it it's just the internet freaked the fuck out. Well, they were going to do that anyways. Well, this is what I'm saying. The internet's just bad. Well, she, did she yes. like, keep up like small yes. little status things like, hey, still in production? Well, I don't think she did. I well, don't that, know if she that, did, but I don't think she did. Well, I mean, if you don't do that, that kind of leads to some suspicion if you disappear no, for a year. No, you, you, if you give money to a Kickstarter project, I, whoever whoever. I'm not saying that, money, that it's feasible or realistic to expect it, no, but it's I'm kind saying of a reason why there's people no reason jump to that to conclusion. There's no reason to do that. To do what, Thomas? There's no reason to keep people updated. Well, sure there is. Yeah, there's plenty no. of reason to keep people updated. No. You got the money. Done. If you're giving money to a Kickstarter project, you are out... Uh, you, you do not matter after that project is done and the money is given to that person. Well, it's like investing in any other project. You kind you're of not investing. Wait, wait, wait. We're not investing. You are giving free money to this person. It is a donation. It is not an investment. It's not an investment, but uh, there is, like... You are required to follow through. Yeah. Uh... I mean, updates for reassurance and are kind of nice things. Yeah, no, there's totally... Like, you're required to follow through. You're not required to give updates. Yeah, but, like, you should give updates. Like, Not required to. Oh, yeah, you're not required to, but you should. You, yeah, well, I never said they were required. I was saying it would be is, good. Like, is deliver the thing that you were paid to deliver. My point is, like, I could see why people would freak out if this person, like death you said, threats? went dark. No, not death threats. Not death That's threats. That's what I'm talking about. Disappeared for a year. Like, panic, yes. Worry, yes. Not death threats. But, like, what the fuck happened to this person? If David didn't drop, like, even an iota of what was going on with another castle for a solid straight year, not even something as like, hey, guys, still working on my game from his Twitter account, people are like, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah. Like, that'd be fucked up. Yeah. People would But then again, the like, my happened. motivations are just like, I would like to continue making games and not have a shitty reputation. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, if. Like, I'm not saying this is Anita person, but, like, if somebody was just like, all right, give me 100 grand for something. And then, you know, it's just like, a sh- put a shitty product out and be done with it. Like, then I guess. I don't know, 300 grand, man. I guess. I don't know. But I know for me, it's like, well, I would like, I'd try to give like an update every month-ish. Just because I feel like it's the right thing to do. Also, considering how sneering uh, she is in her videos... 
I don't think she's someone that's going to kowtow to angry internet people. You know? Well, I haven't watched the videos, and I don't know this person personally, so... Well, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if she it attempts to get that kind of reaction. at sidestepping trash-talking internet personalities. Well, those, those I are mean... Allies. I, Even though they don't know you and don't care who you are. Well, I don't... Like, it's it's easy to judge people unfairly on the internet. Service? Actually, wait, I want to run with this. So let's take, like, Phil Fish or any of the other, like, total, just complete internet fucking hate some people, but they're fucking famous, aren't they? <laughs> and even if they were total assholes and put out a great game, you'd be more likely to hear about it because you know about that internet douchebag. Well, yeah, no, it would just, the way it would work is the, the, inter- the forums would be full of the internet going, look at this asshole Phil Fish in his new game. This game's his stupid new game. And then everybody buys it and they're like, this game sucks. <laughs> That's like Dragon's Crown, man. Like, all right, they totally hosed it, and they're like, man, like it's sexist as shit. Yeah, now everybody I think knows about everybody Dragon's knew Crown. about it, and now I'm like, it's fucking great. If you're gonna do that, there's a, there's, you're walking a fine line when you do that. I think. But you know what? That's, the one guy that's not that my personality to do that, though. The one so. guy that didn't work for, who is the eternal butt of internet jokes, is Dennis <laughs> Dyack. The, the two human guy. Yep. <laughs> well, but in the end, his game wasn't good. And I yeah, his like game that's was what they shit. Think. But I think that's really remarkable that you, he's so bad, even the internet was like, nah, dude. What, so what you're saying is that to virally market my game, I should get into a Twitter fight with Phil Fish? Yes, you need to go Phil Fish, not Dennis Dyack. Actually, yeah, if you were trash-talking all the other indie developers... Like, people would play your game. At least they would play the first one to see how it measured against everybody else's. Because you're just like, see, all your games are shit and mine is awesome. I thought about doing that very obviously and ironically, but then just like, nah. You know what? Yes. I want you to turn indie game development into a WWF program. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, David, you're backlogged games. That's, what's, that's what people are going to judge you on. What? Like your iPhone games and stuff, the stuff you made. Well, one, those are quality. And two, no one's gonna, <laughs> no one's going to judge me, like, harshly on that. No, the moment Have you, you seen start, like no, nobody gives a shit. Rolling, they will they will tear your life apart. That's what they do. Well, they'll they will attempt to. The first time they existed. play Stiffum. That Dude, that game's fun. hilarious. You shut the fuck up. That game was hilarious. Don't See, get that game's great. And this is the but part. Scotty's already broken down laughing at I the don't mention know what of the Stiffum title. Is. It's a tip calculator game. It was a little root. <laughs> it's a roulette wheel with different percentage <laughs> amounts. So I you type this. in your like you type in your bill amount, oh, yeah, and then you spin that. the roulette wheel, and then that's how much you tip. <laughs> and if you get 0%, it just says, stiff Yeah. <laughs> I did take that off the App Store, because it's not as good as my other games, though. But And I only sold, like, 10 copies. But yeah, see, this the, is the part that, of the trash That's talking. the stuff you'll get dragged on. Like, someone's like, you only sold 10 copies of stiff Dude, see, all right, wait, see, here's the thing. If I'm super successful indie developer and I'm a millionaire... I don't give a fuck what the internet thinks because oh, I made yeah. it. I'm a millionaire no off fucking indie. We're games. talking about starting this shit now. But Why see, would I start it now? This is the part in the trash. That's how you talking. get your name out. This is the part in the trash talking where you pick up the scrawny Seattle hipster and put him through a table. <laughs> and David <laughs> trashes. That's how indie game development should be. Yeah, like you so just, just like follow him around and wait for a, wait for him to get to a bar, make sure somebody's taping, and then just out of nowhere, just bust him. But I'm coming for you. <laughs> You oh man! No, oh no. shit! No. So like, you, I should like just do like one of those videos where like I'm in the, like the back, like the locker room, just like, all right, Edmund McMillan. Yes, I'm out for you. Yeah, no, no, no! You just barrel into the bar. Fucking your yourself. games are nothing. No, yeah, David, you just barrel into the bar. Some fucker. Undead K Dave's coming for that. Yeah. Place. Just roar, kick over a stool, and I don't know whatever move you have planned. Edmund, if you ever hear this, even though I don't know you, and you'll never listen to this, your game's are really good. I didn't <laughs> God damn it, you bitch out again. Yeah, he's you, already rolled over. You need to commit. <laughs> okay, Dave. Only guy who almost fights you. All right. You know Every what we need time. to do? We need to make you like The Undertaker or something. Well, here's the thing. Like, you just wear the makeup, and I'll be the shit talker. No, I don't want to <laughs> shit. No, no shit talking. Yeah, skip Tommy. Why shit talking? Oh, God, no. Phil Fish, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, fish. No, I feel like it'd be more fun sticks. not to, like, trash talk the famous ones. Like, trash talk the up and comers. <laughs> no, 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 go big. Go big or go home. No, 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 like, no. start it immediately. Then they'll bring up your name. Look at this little piss ant who's giving me shit on my Twitter account. No, I'd be like, look, 12-year-old who made a crappy iPhone game. This game is broken. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You should just quit now. Picking that up low hanging mean. fruit, David, huh? Can't, can't, that's can't why it's funny. Just can't roll the big boys. And then you put a 12 year old hipster with thick rim glasses <laughs> through a table. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does the delayed cry of like, <laughs> I could, I could see this working very negatively. <laughs> well, Thomas, here's the thing I do totally need some good, like, viral good publicity advice. stunts, good like around the time games. I release the game. So, what would be good? <laughs> I made a great game. And I've been try I've been legitimately trying to come up with stuff like uh, dude. I don't know. All I trolling like Reddit with a fake username called "Totally Not a Viral Marketer for Another Castle." <laughs> um, Actually, wait. While we're on the uh, the subject of the uh, the feminist documentary, his game, the Hoot Nanny game, totally would have been a positive female character. Yeah, but not making that game. Sorry, yeah, but, dude. Here's here's the flip side of. Um, there, there can be a big discussion about women in games, but if you put out a good game with a good female protagonist, no one gives a shit. No one buys it. What about that there Laura Croft game? Like how much, look at how big this conversation has become about women in video games. That we all know people, uh, stuff on the internet of talking about it, but like... Still, how how many good games with good female protagonists have you played? Because Dreamfall, The Longest Journey, is a game that came out in like 2005. It's a game that I've said for a very long time is one of the best written games I've ever played and has a fantastic female protagonist that is one of my favorite, favorite female characters of any medium. No one knows about this game. But I, I never do. buy a game for... What gender the main character? But I is. Uh, but I would assume if there's all these people pissed about the subject, that they would want to support this, these sorts of games. No, wait, wait, I don't give a fuck. I just want to play a good video game. I could care. Listen, like, they totally supported that nine-year-old who proved your brothers wrong. I don't know what you're wait, talking what? about. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking. Oh, no, not at all. No, Thomas, you should look up into that one and get really angry. I'll just put nine-year-old in the Google nine-year-old girl nine-year-old Kickstarter and then the nine-year-old girl kick in my door. Wait, wait, what was Dave? You gotta tell me this one because I'm not gonna get a chance to check. Uh, it was like this lady who started a Kickstarter campaign for her daughter to make a game at an RPG camp or something because her brothers totally were giving her shit about not being able to make a game, but it was just sketchy as hell. Like, it was one of those things where like this person. Is obviously full of shit, but at the same time, no one would call him out on it because it's a sensitive issue, hmm. and you, no one wants to be like the you know what? making fun of a nine-year-old about, girl thing. You know that plane crash uh, where like the top of it got all burned off and everything? Yeah, no. Where they well, ran out, the out oh the, the the names? Yeah, that was. I was thinking about it. Do you think that? I think maybe the reason those fake Asian names got through is because as a white anchor. The road looks totally different. Are you really going to say, no, these aren't real names? Yeah, you're saying... That you're, you're just going to be fucking racist if they're, they're real. so far out of touch that just didn't even occur to them. Well, no, no. I'm saying they probably read them and were like, these are probably bogus. But it's so, it's such a sensitive issue, they probably just didn't want to touch it. Cream of some young guy. You see what died. I'm saying? Come on. I don't know. Because oh, I don't know what was going on through their minds. As, as a white person... Are you really going to step up and be like, no, these names are fake. That isn't real. Your name's ridiculous. I think, like, no. Like, here's the thing. Like, I would probably read, like, the first one and get, like, most of the second one. And then when it got to holy shit, I'd probably be like, <laughs> you guys, this is bullshit. But this is what I'm saying. If you're in a situation where you can lose your job by being racist for an instant... Well, I don't think yeah, the anchor what lost their job. Those turned out to be real. That's like, what I'm saying. What if those names the were real? one percent chance they're real... Like, I knew a guy back in high school named Wong Bing Gong. That was <laughs> his name. Like, well, like I don't blame the newscaster, because they're just reading shit off the teleprompter. And no, then, I feel like they were in a time-pressure yeah, situation. Yeah. Not the anchor, but, like, 
if you're like a fucking intern for that news company. Well, the intern did it on purpose. No, no, the intern for the government agency did it on purpose. I'm oh. saying if you're the intern receiving that information at the news agency, okay. are you really going to stand up and say, no, this isn't real? Especially when the government's told you, hey, this is real, or whatever agency has told you it's real. Like, you're not going to sit there and go, no, th these names are ridiculous. Did, did somebody lose their job over that one? Like, they better have. That intern got fired, but he was already leaving anyway. <laughs> so I think that was it. Is it wrong that that was still really, really funny? That's really funny. Yeah, come on. Hilarious. Holy that fuck. <laughs> <laughs> something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it hilarious. was like bing, bing, crash or something. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Man. That intern's a funny fucker. <laughs> <laughs> No, you said the government told him to do it, or... Well, no, it was an intern at the agency. Yeah. Um, I forget what agency it was, but it, it was it was uh, some agency that they were confirming that information from, of the names of the pilots. It was the place where you would learn who the See, I thought were. it was, like, an intern right. for the news company that just no. lied. No. Ah, whatever. See, Ooh. That, see, this is why the news company didn't do anything wrong, really. This is what I'm talking about. It's because the... A the agency in turn told them, "Hey, this is who it is. Who, who these names were." So, if you're at the news agency, you have to you have to step up and say, "Even though the government told us these were the names, I, I in in order to correct that, you have to step up and say, "No, these names are bullshit." Even though they've already been confirmed. Was it like by email? Like, because I could totally buy someone just going like droning through their day and then not picking that up on like. Just not not noticing it. I, I think I, I could totally see I that happening. Every news per I think it passed through several news people, and they they accepted it. I think that I think that got vetted. They no, didn't I think what they should have done, rather than release that, because how important was that information to be released anyway? Oh, dude, it's it's the fucking mainstream news. Like, yeah, I know they want to release. No, it's like a piece of information they get the moment. Dude, they have if they could learn about when Kate Middleton farts, they would report it to you. <laughs> the the news does not give a shit. It's fluff. They have no standards. Wait. Guys, hold on, hold on. I've got to backtrack. Samus Aran, is she a positive no. female character? No. How Samus so? Aran sucks. Wait, wait. Before or after the uh, the Metroid game made by Team Ninja? Um, yeah, yeah, that, that <laughs> took a great big dump. <laughs> yeah, I never played How that one. How after they totally ruined uh, it? I think, like, she should... It's unfortunate that she isn't a normal part of video gaming. You know? Like, there should be... That should just be normal. She's not a good female character. She should just be a normal female character. It should just be... Because the reason we think it's a good female character is it's because... there's nothing negative to it. Well, no, because we assume it's male because everyone is male in video games and in storytelling. And then takes off the suit and it's a woman. Well, yeah, and the first Super Metroid I played for the NES, yeah, I had no idea it was a female character until the right. ending. Right, but the idea is it's played, like... Your misconception is, hey, it, like she's doing man yeah, stuff. Yeah, but later on, I started playing. I was playing the ones for the uh, the GameCube and shit, still knowing that, hey, this is obviously a female protagonist. It's Samus. I know this, and I was still excited to play the character. Right. Uh, well, what I'm saying is, she should just be a normal character. The things that make her a good female protagonist are that it's hard to tell that she is female. Well, no, just the, just no. It no. It, it has nothing to do with the game or the writing. It's just the circumstances of gender how genders are viewed in our culture. That's it. It's it's com something completely extraneous to the game. Uh, whereas, like, Dreamfall, there's a character in there that is female. Like, is written female, is very identifiably female, and is a very good protagonist. Right. Like, I, I think that is what... That's what people should be trying to do, is... is I, it, it, I don't put a lot of stock in the just we're gonna make a male character, but then oh look it's a girl, you know? Right. I don't think that does a whole lot. I think what we should be striving for is identifiably female. Like because you're not doing any writing for that character, you know? Mm. Uh, we yeah, just make it a big map and be like, we'll clear this. Yeah. How how easy is it to just put long hair on your fucking sprite? Like, you're not really doing service to that gender. I don't drink Sprite, but make it sure. <laughs> now I'm thinking of a uh, fucking two liter with uh, like a hair metal wig on. Nice. See, Thomas, you're I just... feel kind of shitty for not having like a female protagonist in my game, but the only reason I'm doing it is because it would take way too much work. Yeah. To have a second character sprite. Yeah. 
But see, this is what I'm saying. Is the default... The, the de- oh, yeah, no. The default, right. my character's totally just the, like a white dude. Yeah. But whatever. It is what it is. Nope, more gas. Speaking of the Kate Middleton thing, I'm glad that I'm far enough away from celebrity culture. I still don't know what the kid's name was. I don't care. Who? The, the baby Dude, I don't, I don't fucking remember. The princess is oh, whatever. Baby. What I'm saying is I would have known that, like, that would be all over everything if I still worked at Kroger. And now that I don't, I just don't fucking know. All right, Dustin, this is a good place to stop. Wow. Uh, Bo Craig gonna sit back and touch himself for another week. Well, Internet, I'm gonna miss you guys. But, uh, but we'll be back. Uh, nope. This is the final episode. Every episode is the final episode until it's not. Then we can have a reunion tour. Holy shit, that'd be <laughs> right. I still want to do episode one redox, though. Okay, then. We should do that. Like with ducks? Well, Quack. not right now. Right now we're leaving. Say goodbye, Scotty. Aww.